So just an example here of resistors. in <coughs> series and parallel. I should have recorded the previous examples, but I wasn't thinking. <coughs> I have this circuit of 2M here. Make this leg a little bit bigger because I'm going to add two at the end. Three ohms here. This is 15 ohm. This is a dependent current source. The value of that is 4i pointing down. Then I got a resistor on the top of 9 and two resistors here of the value 6 and 6. <coughs> Let me write a few things here. Where is I? Bless you. I is defined as the current going through the 15 amps. This is your I. And this is the voltage V or VX, whatever you want to call it. I use VX, so V, you know, it's a volt. So find VX. That's what the question. That's it. Now notice these two resistors are connected how? Parallel. So the equivalent of them is the product over the sum. The product, it's 6 times 6. The sum is what? 6 plus 6. Or when they are the same values, always half the number. It's a 3. But if you want to see the math behind it, that's the reason. But anytime you take two resistors of the same value and you put them together, if they are in parallel, the answer is half of that. So this will be a 3 connected how with this one, with the 9? In series. So we can add them, that will make it what? 12. 12. So that will be a little bit easier. And I was about actually to bring the 12 next to the 3 and find the equivalent, but there's no need for it. Okay. I can do KCL at the top. Now again, you can assign current in these to any direction you want. So you choose through the three, the three ohm, which way you want the current, up or down. It won't make any difference. Down? Oh, down, you said. Well, I already drew up. My mistake. So the next one, I'll make it down. I4, you want it down? How about I5? Well, I4 and 5, I don't know. I could use I2, I3. I'm not even thinking. But you really assign current any direction you want. Now, when you do KCL at the top, the current going up. Oh, isn't that a current source? Yeah. The current going in. I wish it was voltage. We're done with it. It's two volts. Shouldn't have this class at 8 a.m. in the morning. So let's take the current going in equals the current leaving. The algebraic sum, the current entering the node, 
should equal all the current leaving the node. Current in equals the current out. What is the current going to the node? Based on the picture I drew there. The 2M plus what? I sub 4. And what's leaving the node? I plus 4I plus I5. <coughs> Here's one equation with how many unknowns? 3. I and 4I is what? 5I plus I5 minus I4. So I can't solve that equation. Too many unknowns in it. Now remember, all these elements are connected how? So what's the voltage across them? So when you look at each one, so this is the first one I'm looking at. This is the 3 ohm resistor. I'm defining the voltage here, plus to minus, that's how it's defined, Vx. And I'm looking for the current going in in that direction. I called it I sub 4. <coughs> what is I sub 4 in terms of Vx? Well, Ohm's law says V equals I times R. V here is Vx. But notice which, which way I is going. I is supposed to enter the plus to the minus, in this case going backward. So that's negative I sub 4 times the resistor, which is 3. So if you do the math, I sub 4 is really negative Vx over 3. Not Vx over 3, it's negative. If I define it coming down, yes, it will be Vx over 3. But because I defined it going up through the negative sign is negative Vx over 3. And what is I equal to? I is defined as the current coming down. Well, this is Vx. So that's good. Notice entering the plus. So I equals what? Vx over 15. Positive. Because we get the current going, entering the resistor from the plus side. Now, if I do these two substitution into that one, I will have 2 equals, and I forgot I sub 5, and I'll do I sub 5 after that. 5 times I, 5 times, what is I? Vx over 15. Vx over 15. Plus, I forgot to solve I sub 5. Notice this is Vx plus 2 minus. So I sub 5 entering the plus, that's good. So I sub 5 will be Vx over what? 12. 12. Minus I sub 4, which is what? Negative Vx over 3. How many unknowns do you see in that equation now? Only one. Play with the math. Two equals. This will be Vx over 3 plus Vx over 12. And this will be Vx over 3. Easiest thing, multiply the entire equation by 12. All your fractions will disappear. 12 times 2, 24. Is that 4 Vx? Plus Vx, plus 4 Vx. 24 equals 9 Vx. Can we get Vx? 24 over 9 volts. I can divide 24 and 9. No, I can. By 3, oh yes, by 3, right? By 3, this is 8. By 3, this is 3. Which is 2 and 2 thirds. <coughs> Two point six six seven volts. That's the voltage Vx.
That was the question. Find Vx. Okay, let's try another one. I see a picture of transistor there, so let's see what they're talking about. Now, we didn't discuss even AC yet, but we'll pull one. AC voltage. That's where you plug into the wall. When you plug your hair dryer in the morning or your toothbrush. So you're not attaching it to five volts. You're attaching it to the wall, which is a sine wave coming out. So we have 12 cosine. I should have left some space because I got right small here. 12 cosine. I can't tell that's 1000 T. And it's in millivolts. Milli. There's a voltage source here. It really doesn't matter what that value is. Is that 1000 T? 1000 T, yes. In, that's not in the, in the USA, we use 377 T. The 377, it's really 2 pi F. Two, that number usually 2 pi F. 2 pi, and what's the frequency in the USA? 60 hertz. What's 2 pi times 60? So if you do the math, 2 pi, 2 is pi, 2 pi times 60, can you see that? It would be 377. So when we do a problem like to relate to us in the US, you'll see that number being 377 t, which is 2 pi f times t. So if you want to divide that, you go 1,000 divided by 2 divided by pi. That will tell you what the frequency is. And you can research and see what country uses 160 hertz, 159 point something. You know. So we have this. We have 30 ohms on the top. 30 ohms, but now we have 15 kilo ohms. Huge resistor here. And this voltage here, we'll call it Vx. The top is not attached anywhere, but now we have a dependent current source it's pointing down, and it has a value. Let me see what is 1.2 milli times Vx milliamp. 1.2 times Vx milli. It's attached to 10K. Which is also attached to 1K. And the question, what's V out? And V out is defined as plus to minus. Is it attached at the top there? attached on the top, but not here and here. Now, the question, what's V out? Find V out. Well, let's look and see. 
what is this current here based on my picture what's that current coming out yes 1.2 vx milliamp that means if you take this current i define it going up this current add them together should equal to that current whatever goes in must equal whatever leave in that node so this is I sub 1, I sub 2. So I sub 1 plus I sub 2 equals what? 1.2 Vx milliamp. Well, where is that current coming from? That current was coming from here. So if I ask you what's this current, it's 1.2 Vx milliamp. It just loops right there, splits, combines. Not even affecting this part. This current then splits, still I sub 1. This current then splits till I sub 2. Since I sub 1 plus I sub 2 equals 1.2 Vx milliamp, these two have to equal to that current. So I can find I sub 2 in terms of Vx using what? Current division. I sub 2 is equal to that's the current through that it's that resistor over the sum of them 10k over the sum of these two which is what 11k times the current entering which is 1.2 vx milliamp <coughs> the k's cancel each other out 10 divided by 11 times 1.2 so that will equal 1.09 Vx milliamp so the current I sub 2 going upward going up is 1.09 whatever Vx is milliamp that means the other one is <coughs> the, yes yeah it's gonna split 1.09 and this is 1.2 the difference between them is 0.03 is it you said yeah is it three point one one because they have to add up to 1.2 okay. point 11 11 9 is 20 yeah. so can I find V out because we we're looking for V out notice V out is defined plus minus as you traveling up if the current's going up it's gonna mark it which way plus on the bottom minus on the top so v out is going to be negative i sub 2 times the 1k and i sub 2 is that number 1.09 vx milli times the 1k what will happen to the milli and the 1k cancel each other out negative 1.09 times vx will not be amps now because that's a voltage because um. this is ohm this is amps oh, okay. ohms loss is v equals i times r so that's really volts so if i know what vx is i can tell you what v out that's what the question what is v out hmm let's look at this half Maybe I can go voltage division here. If I do voltage division, Vx equals, I'm looking for that one, so it's this resistor, 15K over the sum of them, times V out, which is, I mean, V source, just 12 cosine 1000T, millivolt so let's do the math 15,000 divided by 15,000 0 30 that's 30 not K this is 15 K and there's no K here times 12 
t function of time. Okay. Any given time. His mom sine wave alternates, changes per time. 11.98 cosine 1000 t millivolts. That's Vx. Can I find V out using that equation? So V out is going to be negative 1.09 Vx, negative 1.09 times 11.98 cosine 1000 T millivolts. It's going to be roughly 13.05 negative cosine And the question, what does that T mean? This is my ruler here. So I can draw a picture. If I was to draw what the source voltage is, The source voltage was a sine function. It was a 12, if you look at the circuit, 12 cosine. That's the frequency. 2 pi f here. So 12 cosine. What's a 12 cosine looks like? Will be as high as 12. And it repeats itself. It doesn't stop here. I'm just showing you one cycle. So that's what the T means. It depends on what time you look at it. You give me a value of 14, I'll tell you what the value is. It's going to go as high as 12. This is negative 12. That's the voltage for the source. We'll call it Vs, the source that you put in. What is V out going to be? It's negative 13 cosine. So it's higher actually than this, but also flipped upside down. And that's where V out is. It's flipped. When it was plus, it's a minus now. Once a minus is a plus, and how high does it go? 13.05 milli. And negative 13.05. So we flipped it completely and we made it a little bit bigger. It goes a little bit higher. So you want to know what the voltage, you tell me when. You want it at 10 millisecond, you put in 10 millisecond here. For T, you do the math, you multiply it, and you get your answer. So V out, for example, your voltage, if you want to know what the voltage at 2 millisecond, millisecond, that's 10 to the minus 3, that's what T is. Cosine, what's 2 milli times 1,000 T? I mean, that's a 2. So now make sure you count in radian mode, and that's millivolt, the answer. So where's the mode here? Bless you. Thank you. I gotta make sure I'm in radian. I am now. What's negative 13.05 times the cosine of two? It's actually positive 5.43 millivolts. What is the voltage at? Five millisecond. That'd be negative thirteen point oh five cosine five. <coughs> negative thirteen point oh five times the cosine of five. 
negative 3.7. 70 millivolts. So your voltage is not the same value, it's changing. Depends where you grab it. You want it here, it's negative till you hit that point. Then it would be zero, start to increase all the way to 13. Then start to decrease back to zero, then negative value to negative 13. Then back to zero and so forth. So you tell me when, and I'll tell you what the value is. So if we got a problem like that, would it say at we might ask you, we might say to you, what's the voltage at 3 millisecond, 2 millisecond? Or might just say, give me the expression for that, like this. I took this out of the book and they just were looking for that expression. That's it. But since the question came up, what's T here, is it time? And you tell me what time and I'll tell you what the value is. I might be able to squeak another before the... Time is up here. Okay. <coughs> this is just combining resistors in series in parallel and using voltage division, current division, <coughs> trying to apply all the rules. Uh, looks similar to the one we just did. There's one different. Well, it looks different, so I'll try that one. Another example I'm taking, one amp. Make this leg long here, because at the end there's a lot of pieces to it. That's three ohm. That's 5 ohm. Three and nine here. Then three, five. Then three and six in parallel. And the question, what is this current? We'll call it I3. The current I3 is going through a 3 ohm resistor. <coughs> and what is the voltage here? They call it Vx. Find I3 and Vx. Get five, six minutes to do this. Now notice these two are what? So the product over the sum, three times nine over three plus nine. Three times nine is 36. 36 over 12, 27. Uh, 27. 27 over 12, which is what? 2.25. 2.25. This one, again, parallel, the product over the sum. 3 times 6, which is 18, over 3 plus 6, which is 9. 18 <coughs> over 9, that's a 2. So if you look at that circuit, can be re redrawn now, that's 1 amp. There's 3. This is five. And we can combine all of these into one resistor. We get a two, a five, a three, and a 2.25, all connected how? Series, we can add them. <coughs> three and five, uh, eight. eight and two, ten, 10 and that number, 12.25.
Now again, let's take a look at these two. How are they connected? Parallel, the product over the sum. Three point five five. So my circuit now looks like this. <coughs> and this is I sub three. And this is the voltage. That's my circuit now. Can I find I sub 3? Isn't that current division? The current's going to come up there and split. So I will have to use that resistor, the opposite one, 3.55 over the sum of them, 3 plus 3.55 times the source current, which is one amp. Point five four. <coughs> That's what the current is. Can I find the voltage Vx cross the source here? Well it just happens to be it's the same voltage cross that resistor which is the same across that resistor, they're in parallel. So if I know what this voltage here, I know what the voltage there is. Ohm's loss is V equals I times R. I know the current and I know the resistor. So V will equal I, which is I sub 3, times R, which is 3. That's 0 0.54 times 3, which is 1.63. I carried more digits, that's why the 3 instead of a 2. In case you want like 3 times 4 is 12, what'd you get there? 3. Because I left all the digits on my calc there, you know. <coughs> so the voltage there, Vx, is 1.63 volts. Current division, voltage division, KVL, KCL, and resistors and in parallel and in series. That's all we covered so far. And I keep using the same thing. And power. That's where your test on Thursday will be a similar problem to these. Now after that, we'll show you where, what happens if you have, now all these, you only have single node here. Notice single node. What happens if you have a resistor up there on the top and split and you can't really combine them? So what do you do then? Or what am I going to do? Or if you have another current source here, or a voltage source here, what do I do now? So that's where the next chapter comes in, different techniques of solving more complicated circuit problems. These are just basic ones using the basic laws of electricity. Ohm's law, current division, voltage division, KCL, KVL, and power. <coughs>